If you have sciatica, you've no doubt been told that you need to move to heal. Exercise is a really crucial part of a healing process, but you might have experienced this where you try to go to the gym or you try to go to a yoga class and then your sciatica flare-up actually gets worse. You need to move to heal, but when you move it gets worse. This yo-yo vicious cycle can be very frustrating. If you can relate, this video is for you. Hey, my name is Lucas. I'm a yoga teacher. I have had sciatica myself. Really, really scary and frustrating. The good news is it can and will go away. I will guide you through a 12-minute gentle flow specifically for sciatica that hopefully will help you to stay active and not aggravate your condition. Sciatic nerve, just as a quick review here, is actually a group of nerves down in your lower back, L4, L5, S1, 2, and 3, so your sacral vertebrae 1, 2, and 3. There are five nerve roots that come out and they pass through this hole right here, which is called your sciatic foramen. They come together and they form this big long electrical cable that runs down the back of your leg, known as your sciatic nerve. It's the longest nerve in the body. It's the thickest nerve in the body. In places, it's even two centimeters thick, so you can visibly see it like a cable running down the back of your leg. It's a mixed nerve. That means it is a sensory nerve, but also a motor nerve for most of the important muscles along the back side of your upper leg and almost all of the muscles in the lower compartment of your lower leg. It does a lot of stuff. It has a big role, and when it gets impinged or pinched, up here, upstream, that's very often when that radiating pain down your butt, down the back of your leg, or all the way down your leg to your foot can come into play. Please know that most sciatica will resolve, just like most conditions in your lower back, within six to eight weeks. However, exercise, movement, self-care like you're interested in, this can help you accelerate the healing process, and probably even more importantly, help you to heal strong, so hopefully the problem doesn't come back again. Before we jump into our practice, a couple of assumptions I'll make. I'll make the assumption that your sciatica, like 90 plus percent of people, is caused by some kind of compression, bulging disc, herniation, or inflammation in your lower back. Second thing that I'll assume is like most people, forward flexion, so forward bending, is what triggers it. Like you can see here on this model, this herniated disc would very likely impinge on this skeleton's sciatic nerve. With that in mind, when we practice today, we'll do all of our poses in a slight spinal extension. So rather than flexing forward, we'll keep our spine neutral or even in a gentle backbend. It's a very simple hack that can make practices a lot more accessible. All that said, you should expect to have some discomfort when you're walking or practicing yoga or doing any form of exercise when you're managing sciatica. However, the pain threshold, I'd like to give you a range. Aim for four out of 10 in terms of discomfort. Don't push past four of 10. And if that is happening, if you're at five, six, or seven or more, you need to modify or skip the practice or wait a day before you try. Four out of 10 is a really helpful range. And the following day, you should either see your symptoms flat or improving, not getting worse. Things need to get better to get better they won't get worse before they get better. Before we jump in, if we haven't met before, my name is Lucas, I'm a yoga teacher. I publish videos every week about health span and yoga and stretching and breathing. To support the channel, it's really simple, just hit subscribe down below. If you're interested in this specific sequence for sciatica, I always put a PDF link down in the description so you can download images and instructions for everything that we'll do. For our practice, you'll need two identical chairs or stools. Let's get started. Welcome to your sciatica flow practice. Stand with your feet hips width distance apart between two chairs or two stools. They should be equal height. Throughout our practice today, we'll keep our spine in a very slight extension, so a very gentle back bend. Inhale, reach your arms up above your head, your hands pressed together. Exhale, bend your knees deeply, hinge at your hips and place your hands down on the stool. Step your feet back to a plank pose and pause here. Your feet are as wide as your hips, your fingers spread, gaze in front of you on the floor. Point your toes, lift your heart through your shoulders for an upward facing dog on your stools. Exhale, press back to a downward facing dog, but keep your knees bent throughout. Inhale through your nose for one, two, three, four, 
Exhale, four, three, two, one. Gently step your feet forward between your stools. Your feet are as wide as your hips. Inhale, reach your arms out and up to touch. Exhale, release your arms at your sides. Let's do that again. Inhale, reach your arms out and up to touch above your head. Bend your knees, hinge at your hips, and carefully fold forward and place your hands on the stools. Step your feet back to a plank position. Keep that slight spinal extension. Gaze in front of you on the floor. Good. Now point your toes and lift your heart to a very gentle upward facing dog. Look up, chest moving forward. Roll back over your toes, place your feet on the ground, press back to downward facing dog. Your hands are on the stools, your knees are bent deeply, deeply, and your spine stays slightly, slightly arched. Step your feet between your stools. Inhale, reach your arms out and up to touch above your head. And exhale, release your arms at your sides. Let's try another variation of this sun salute. Inhale, reach your arms out and up to touch above your head. Exhale, bend your knees, hinge at your hips, place your hands down. Step your feet back to a plank position. Keep your left toe mound on the ground, but step your right foot between your hands. Move into a crescent lunge pose. So your back heel is lifted, but kicking back. Your right foot is between your stools or your chairs, and keep your fingertips on your stools for support. Again, still a slight back bend. Shift your gaze up to where the ceiling meets the wall in the corner, and breathe here. Good. Place your hands down and step your right leg back in a plank pose. Switch legs. Your left foot comes between your stools. Your right heel stays off the ground, but kick through that back leg. Keep your spine in a slight arch. Fingertips on your stools, chest moving up and forward. Your gaze right where the wall meets the ceiling. Breathe through your nose. Good. Place your hands down. Step your feet back to plank pose. And now bend your knees deeply. You might need to walk a little bit closer. Press your heels down. Keep your spine slightly arched. Your hands or your fingers on the stools into a downward facing dog on top of the stools. Good. Look forward. Walk your feet between the stools. Knees bent. Inhale. Reach your arms out and up to touch above your head. Exhale, release your arms at your sides. Take a step back, bend your knees, hinge at your hips, place your fingertips on top of your stools for support. Keep that slight arch in your back so you might need to bend your knees a lot, but drop your head here. I'd like you to very carefully load up your hamstrings, your posterior chain, the back side of your body. Head is relaxed, heels are heavy, knees bent as deeply as needed, pushing the weight backwards. Two more breaths. One more breath. Good. And slowly, slowly rise all the way up to stand and release your arms at your sides. Good. Turn to the side with your feet about one meter apart. Point your right toes towards the stools and turn your left foot in at about a 45 degree angle. Tee your arms out at the side. Inhale, reach out over your right leg and then place your right hand on top of the stool or the chair. You might need to adjust so the stool is more over your foot. Your legs are straight. Both arms are straight. Stick your left arm in the air. Look up towards your fingertips and breathe through your nose here. Good. Let's switch sides. So pinwheel your arms back up to stand. Release your arms. Switch feet. 
Step your left foot forward, turn your right foot so it's angled in, about 45 degree angle. Arms T position, inhale, reach out over your left leg, and exhale, place your fingertips down onto the stool or the chair, reach your right arm up towards the sky. Again, you might need to adjust your stool so it's over your foot, that's fine. Gaze up towards your right fingertips in the air. And release. Inhale, pinwheel your arms all the way back up to stand. Step your left leg back, release your arms at your sides, and give a little shake. Step forward, place your hands on top of your stools, and step your feet back so you're in a plank position. Now here I'd like you, if you're using two stools or chairs like me, to move your stools or chairs so they're all the way together, all the way together. Place your right hand in the middle of one of your stools, with your middle finger pointing forward. Turn your right foot on its side. Stack your left foot on top of your right foot. Stretch your left arm up into the air. Allow for a slight curve in your lower back. Side plank pose. Breathe here. And slowly lower your left arm down. Switch sides. Your left hand is in the middle. Take a moment to set it up if you need to. Your left foot is on its side. Place your right foot on top of your left foot. Flex your toes. Stretch your right arm up towards the sky. Turn and look up towards your fingers. Side plank pose. And slowly lower your hand down. Bend your knees, make your way all the way up to stand, and shake it out. Grab one of your stools and sit down. We'll now do a nerve flossing practice. Nerve flossing is a technique designed to essentially encourage your nerves to slide freely between the muscles and other soft tissues that they pass through. This is a very simple practice, but sitting in your stool with your ankles under your knees and your feet flat on the floor, let's start off by lifting our right leg off the ground. And as you extend your leg, lift your chin away from your chest. And as you bend your knee, drop your chin in towards your chest. Again, inhale, straighten your leg, lift your chin, look up. Exhale, bend your knee, drop your chin towards your chest. Inhale, straighten your right leg, chin away from your chest, look up. Exhale, bend your knee, your chin drops towards your chest. Two more. Inhale, look up, lift up, straighten your right leg. Exhale, drop your chin, bend your knee. One more time. Inhale, straighten your right leg, look up. Exhale, bend your right knee, drop your chin towards your chest, put your right foot down, and switch. Left leg, inhale, straighten your leg, lift your chin and look up. Exhale, chin drops towards your chest, knee bends slowly. Inhale, straighten your left leg, lift your chin, look up towards the sky. Exhale, bend your left leg, drop your chin towards your chest. Inhale, lift your chin away from your chest, straighten your leg, look up. Exhale, bend your left knee, drop your chin towards your chest. Two more times. Inhale, straighten your leg, lift your chin, look up. Exhale, bend your left leg, drop your chin towards your chest. Final round. Inhale, look up, straighten your leg, lift. Exhale, bend. Bend your left knee, drop your chin towards your chest. Good, return back to a neutral position with your feet underneath your knees, your feet planted on the floor. If your feet are not long enough to reach the floor, put blocks underneath your feet. Now really carefully, very gently, if possible, lift your right leg up and put your right ankle on top of your left knee. If that's not possible, you could also put your right ankle on top of your left shin. Place one hand on your ankle, one hand on your knee, gaze forward in front of you, breathe in through your nose, 
and breathe out through your nose. In through your nose. And out through your nose. Slowly release your right leg to the floor. Switch legs. Be gentle. See what you can do. Left ankle on top of your right knee. If that doesn't work, put your left ankle on top of your right shin. Adjust as needed. One hand on your ankle. One hand on your knee. Gazes forward. Let's breathe in. And breathe out. Inhale, and exhale. Slowly make your way back up to sit, release your leg, shake out your legs. Hope you found that practice helpful. Along with yoga, one of the best things you can do is walk. Use that same rubric from before, four out of 10 in terms of discomfort or less meaning you will have some discomfort when you're walking, but don't push past four of 10. If possible, aim to walk 30 minutes per day. It can make a world of difference. And during your healing journey, when things are going in the right direction, you'll feel that radiating pain moving up, 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 and eventually just feel more localized pain around your lower back. It's a little counterintuitive, but you actually want the radiating pain to disappear and the lower back pain to become more prevalent this is a sign that you're on the right track. If you'd like to train with me, I have a program called Yoga Body Daily where we do strength and stretch and steps every day. It's designed for people like you who are looking to live their best life, their healthiest life in the second half. You can learn more at yogabody.com. Once again, the simplest way to support the channel, just hit subscribe down below. And don't forget to grab that PDF you'll find down in the description below. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you find this video helpful. Keep going with your yoga and your stretching and we'll see you in the next video.